Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your word. Uh, we ask you today for a revelation of your word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive your word, to put it into practice, and to see it produce and bear fruit in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your spirit moving through this portion of the service, and we ask you to help the people to receive the fullness of what you have for them to receive. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for all the good things that are done today. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we've been on a series for a few months now that we're calling The Things of the Spirit. And uh, I believe we're coming, we're in the last little section of this uh, series. I'm always cautious to say that because I said that once and I think we did 10 more messages. So <laughs> whatever the Lord wants, but it looks to me like we're finishing this up. We still got some very important things to talk about. And then uh, the next, uh, we'll, when we get back from vacation, we'll get into the next thing that the Lord would have us to. Um, but we've covered a lot of ground. And so as always, if you've missed any, it'd help you to go back and, and watch and listen um, because each one is building on the other. Um, but uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 has been our foundation text. And it says there, uh, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And uh, we've mentioned how the word gifts is not in the Greek writing, which is the original writing. And so I know a lot of people don't realize this, but the Bible wasn't written in English. It, it was inspired by God and it was written in Greek. And so the way it got to English is somebody, and if I have this right, people that didn't even speak Greek were translating it from the Greek you, you have to check me on that, but I believe I read that years ago. They didn't speak Greek, but they were translating it to English off of dictionaries and help and stuff like that. But I digress. In the Greek writing of this, the word gifts is not in there. And I, I, think, I say that a lot, but I think people don't, I'm not making that up. When they translated this into the King James, they were trying to help you understand it. And so they thought that putting the word gifts in there would help you understand it better. Because it really just reads like this, now concerning spiritual brethren, I wouldn't have you ignorant. Spiritual what? Well, it's not just spiritual gifts that he doesn't want you to be ignorant about. It's spiritual things that he doesn't want you to be ignorant about. I like the complete Jewish Bible. It says the things of the Spirit. And so there are, there are things that the Holy Spirit has and and, and wants to do. He doesn't want you to be ignorant of that. But the truth is, there are some other evil spiritual stuff that he doesn't want you unaware of as well, right? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. That, that's spiritual stuff, right? And the devil is the spiritual stuff. And so this is, this is much, talking about much more than just the, the, what we call the gifts of the spirit. It's talking about spiritual things. And uh, uh, one, one definition of the word ignorant means I don't want you unacquainted with spiritual things or the things of the Spirit. Now go with me to Ezekiel 39. And um, of course, I don't have a lot of time to review today. Um, that's why it's, it helps uh, if you come to church every Sunday. <laughs> but um, we began talking a few weeks back. I told you we were going to start talking about some things of the Spirit. Say that with me. Some things. Some, things. some of them. <laughs> Not all of them. Some, some of them. And it might just be two of them or three of them. I don't know. But some things of the Spirit. And what I mean by that are things that can happen when the Spirit of God shows up. These are some things of the Spirit. And so the one, first one we talked about is that when the Spirit shows up, one of the things that can happen, not all the time, but, but a lot of the time, when the Holy Spirit shows up, he will inspire joy in people. And so there will be expressions of joy when the Holy Spirit shows up. And we found out that these expressions can even be of an exceeding nature, right? It could be laughing. It could be dancing. It could be singing. It could be running. It could be shouting. It's... it's God said, in my presence, there's fullness of joy. Fullness means abundance of joy. And so if you're ever in a service and uh, the Holy Spirit shows up in the service 
and peop, joy starts coming on people. That shouldn't be shocking. That shouldn't be surprising. That shouldn't even be weird to you. Because all these scriptures we read the last couple weeks and talked about how this happens when the Holy Ghost shows up. And so you remember the video we watched of Brother Marty when he was, those of you here, you can, if you go back a couple weeks, you can, you can watch and see in the service. Brother Marty sat down to, to close the service out and he started, he was supposed to sing is what he was supposed to do and close the service out. And he, he started to and then he started laughing. And then he started laughing a little bit more. And then he tried to sing but couldn't. And then, uh, you remember scripture said, David danced before the Lord with all of his might? Yes. Well, then Brother Marty danced before the Lord with all of his might. Yes. The Holy Spirit didn't overtake him and make him do that. He's inspiring it, and then when Brother Marty yields, then the Holy Spirit jumps on it. Right? So now, you can look at that and go, that's strange. That's just weird. That's not God. Well, what are you going to do with all these verses about the Holy Spirit and joy? <laughs> so no, that's not weird. It's not strange. It's actually normal. Kingdom-wise, that's just normal mode of operation. And we ought, to, we ought to see services all the time where people are laughing, shouting, uh, smiling. You know, that's a, that's a novel idea, smiling church. You know, laughing, <laughs> shouting, and, 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 and laughing. And if the Holy Ghost moves like that, that's just, that's just, that's just what happens when the Holy Spirit shows up because in His presence... There's fullness of joy. Yes. See, the, the devil's tried to get us to look at something that's supposed to be normal and good for us and go, oh, that's weird, ain't it? Yeah. No, what's weird is people coming into church, never laughing, right. never smiling, and being sad and down in the presence of God. I think God looks at that and goes, this is weird. <laughs> this is very strange. I said rejoice again. Again, I say rejoice and Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad and let the righteous rejoice and be exceedingly glad and, and these are the righteous people and, and look at them. They misread it. They said, let us rejoice and be exceedingly sad. I don't know. No. See, this is supposed to be normal. And so don't let it bother you if that happens in a service. Or, and, and I tell you, it can happen in your own personal prayer time if you yield to it. And there are times in your prayer time where you just need to set time aside to just rejoice and if, you, if you're sensitive, the Holy Spirit will go laugh a little and, and just and let it go from there. And I'd encourage everybody in here to get involved in that at home and, and take some time to practice that at home. You'll flow much easier with it if you ever get into a service when it, when it happens. And uh, if you hang around here, we're going to have a service where the joy of the Lord is going to be moving. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to look exactly like it. I don't know what it's going to look like. It might not look like exactly like it did on the video, but I know the Holy Ghost, and I know when he comes, he comes in joy, right? And so that was the first one that we talked about, that those kinds of things can happen, expressions of joy. And then uh, today I want to talk to you about another thing of the Spirit, and it is that oftentimes when the Holy Spirit shows up, um, well, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I'll give it to you, I promise. But let, let's read Ezekiel 39, 29, and we'll work our way uh, to that. God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and His presence and His power, these three, you really could say, are, are one in the same. The least you could say about those three things is they are connected. What? The Spirit, say the Spirit, the presence, and the power. These three are connected. Um, Ezekiel 39, 29 says, Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. The word face in, that, in the Hebrew is the same word that means presence. Did you hear that? And so let's go ahead and read it like that. Neither will I hide my presence anymore from them. For I've poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel. Do you see how the, the spirit and the presence, these are connected. I'm not going to hide my presence. I'm going to pour out my spirit. Well, I thought, Lord, you were talking about my presence. Why would you say spirit? I am talking about my presence when I talk about my spirit. So the spirit and the presence, they're the same. And then uh, you can just, don't flip to all these. We'll just look at these on the screen. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 talked about how people who wouldn't repent 
were going to be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So here, here now in this one, you got the presence and the power. These two are connected. The spirit and the presence, and then the presence and the power. And then Luke 1.35 uh, says this, to, the angel Lord said to Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. So now we got the spirit and power. Say that with me, the spirit and the power. Do you see what he's saying? The Holy Ghost is gonna come and when he comes, you know what he's gonna bring? Power. And then in Ezekiel, God said, I'm not gonna hide my presence from you. I'm gonna pour out my spirit on you. So say it again, the spirit and the presence, the spirit, and the power. And then in 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, it talked about the presence and the power. They're gonna be destroyed by the presence and the glory of his power. Now, you, you might wonder why I'm talking to you about this. It's important you understand this for where we're going. Because when the Holy Spirit does show up, it is the presence of God, and he shows up in power. And so when you're talking about manifestations of the spirit, the things of the spirit, when the Holy Ghost shows up, the presence of God's in the room. And not only that, the power of God is in the room. Can you say amen to this? And so, um, praise God. I got a lot of scriptures today. <laughs> um, God is omnipresent. Say that with me. God, God. is omnipresent. omnipresent. What does that mean? God is everywhere. The psalmist said in the 139th Psalm, he said, where, should, where will I go? to get away from your presence. Uh, I think he actually said, like, if I send up into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. What's he saying? God, you're everywhere. You're everywhere. So he says, God really in hell? Uh, in the sense of him being omnipresent, he is, but he is not manifesting his presence in hell. Did you hear that? I mean, I just read the scripture said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. He's only there because he's everywhere. But he's not there like he'll show up in your house. He ain't gonna show up in hell like he shows up in your place or in a church service where people are hungry for him. It's different. But uh, he, God's on, he's everywhere. Uh, well, uh, but he's not manifesting to the same degree everywhere. And so, you know, you remember when that God said, go up to the other room, upper room and wait for me? And, and the Spirit will come and you'll be endued with power on high? Well, they got up to the upper room and they were waiting. Well, God was there already in the sense that he is omnipresent. But he was about to be there in a whole other way in just a second. Do you see what I'm saying? So he was, he was in the upper room before they were. But then they got up to the upper room and they were waiting for him. Well, I thought he was there already. Well, he was, but now he's getting ready to manifest himself in the upper room. That's a difference. Um, and so other scriptures bear this out. Isaiah 64, 1. You can just look on the screen. Don't, don't try to flip to all these. Uh, it says there, Oh, that you would come down, that the mountains might flow down at your presence. What's the prophet saying? Oh, that you would come down. Well, why does he need to come down? I thought he was everywhere. He's not. He knows God's everywhere. He's, he's, he's asking God for his manifested presence. God's showing up, you could say. Remember when Jesus said, he that loves me and keeps my commandments, I will love him, my father will love him. And then he said this, I will manifest myself to him. The word manifest in that verse means I will display myself to him. He's, you're, you will have an encounter with him. See, people live in this earth and God is everywhere. So God's in the house of the sinner, but they're not encountering him because they won't let him in in manifested form. Does this make sense to you? And so when he shows up, now you're having an encounter with him. Um, that's much different from him just being everywhere. And so uh, it said that in Isaiah 64, 1, oh, that you would come down that the mountains might flow at your presence. The psalmist said in Psalm 17, 3, you visited me in the night. Well, how can God visit if he's already there? So you can see all these verses are, are revealing to you, yes, he is omnipresent, but then 
There's another level of this to understand that he's not manifesting himself to the same degree everywhere. Some places he's displaying himself, more of himself. That's what the word manifest means. It means I'm going to exhibit. You could say like this, I'm going to put myself on display. Isn't that what he did when he came into the upper room? He was there already. But then he put himself on display. He's manifesting himself. And, and he's done this in your life, even if you haven't realized it. Anytime you sensed his presence in your house, heard from him in prayer, saw a miracle or saw something happen, or you ever just have God's, uh, you, 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 you uh, pull into the shopping store and the parking lot's all full and you just ask God, Lord, I thank you for a good parking spot. And you just pull forward and somebody's pulling out at the right time. Yeah. Not a coincidence. That was God showing him a little bit of him. That was just a little bit of himself too. Yeah. But it, wasn't it fun? Yeah. I mean, weren't you just so blessed by that? Happy about that? And you don't want to minimize that. You want to thank God for it. But that's him showing himself to you. And, uh, and so although he is everywhere, there are some places where he is manifesting himself, putting himself on display more than others. Can you say amen to this? Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, go with me to Ezekiel 38 then. Ezekiel 38. Are we doing okay so far? Yeah. Ezekiel 38. Um, one thing that, that it'll, it'll sound, it's going to sound elementary when I say this to you. But one thing that we need to acknowledge and just remind ourselves is this. God is real. <laughs> He's not pretend. Hebrews talked about he that comes to God must believe he is. And he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. In, uh, in, in Psalm 14:1, the psalmist said, the, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And so foolish people don't believe God is real. But you and I, one thing that makes us us is we believe he is. David said it like this. He said in Psalm 91, he said, I looked up into the night sky. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit. But I looked up into the heavens and I saw the glory of God. What's that mean? I, I looked up in the sky and I immediately knew God is real. He created this. And so God is not pretend. God is real. He, we serve a real God. And he really could show himself and manifest himself in this service. He already is uh, to a degree, but he could show up in your house because he's real. So he can really come into the room more so than just being omnipresent. He can come into the room, right? You know why he can do that? Because he ain't a fake God. He's a real God. And all throughout the Old Testament on into the new, he was visiting people all the time. He talked to Adam, visited Adam, talked to uh, um, uh, Enoch and walked with him and visited Abraham and visited Moses and came and visited all these people. And, and in the New Testament, Paul would be caught up into a trance and all these, God was visiting all the time, came into the upper room. He hasn't changed. Would he still be a God that would want to visit his people today? I'm talking about he shows up in the room and you know God is here. Ooh, I can sense it. Yeah, I, I know you, I got people nodding. I know you know what I'm talking about because there's times you just sense, ooh. And what you're sensing is a greater degree of him manifesting himself to you. That's, it, this is why it's important you come to church the right way. I don't mean like take the right road. You need to do that to get here too. But when you got a group of us that come in here collectively, yes. hungry for his presence, expecting his presence, and ready to not just be an observer in what's going on, but to be a participator in what's going on, we can usher in greater degrees of his presence. He's the one that said, the people that love me and keep my commandment love me. Love's dealing with honor. Those that honor me, those that value me, those that hunger for me, those that desire me, those that want me. When you come in like that, you get a collective people that come like that, we can usher in God's presence. We can make room for him like that. 
And then people that might not be as far as long as you are spiritually, they can come in and experience it and be changed by it. Huh? Because the, the table's been set. The atmosphere's been set. But if you stumble in, half awake, not really wanting to be here, how long is Matthew going to go today? He's been going long lately, hasn't he? I mean, it's been getting late, later and later, it seems like. You know? I mean, if that's what you're thinking about and talking about, and you know, you're not really barely paying attention and got one eye open and you know, counting the tiles on the ceiling. One, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I do that time, oh, start over. Why would God show up for you? You don't even care. But if you come in, you're ready to praise. You got your shouting clothes on. Huh? You're not waiting for the worship team to get you going. You're going to get them going. Hmm? Not waiting on them. No, I, I'm, gonna, I'm coming in. Huh? I'm going I'm to sing. I'm going to dance. I'm going to clap and smile. And, you know, I mean, if you're sitting there and worshiping you're like this. The Lord told Brother Keith something one time because he was in worship and he was kind of, you know, everybody makes mistakes. He was kind of, you know, just ready for it to be over. And this is years ago. And uh, the Lord said to Brother Keith, he said, Keith, he said, if you're not getting much out of the worship, the music, the singing, he said, don't assume I am either. Think about it. If you're not getting much out of it, and he's not talking about the team. He's talking about your attitude towards it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so, but if you come in, you're ready to go. And you're hooked. And then transition starts to flow. And you're hooked in the transition. And if we prompt you to do something, you know, we, may, we tell you to make a confession. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, you know, you go like this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're not hooked. You're, not, you're still being pulled around by your flesh. But you're, you're yielding. And you're, you're in. And then preaching starts, and you're on the edge of your seat. You're like, come on, son, give it to me. Give me the word. I want the word. Yes, amen. You're like, come on. Yeah, keep going, keep going. The, you're hungry. And the Lord has a tendency to fill the hungry heart. Yes, he will. You hunger and thirst after righteousness. Yes. And that'll affect how much he'll show up in a service. Sure. You know, when you preach, I was just talking to a great friend of mine this week about services and stuff like that. You know, all services are different. And there'll be times that you have a service and when it's over, you preached it and you're like, I'm glad that's over. And it, for me, it wasn't because I didn't have anything to start with. It just, it was hard to preach that day. And I did the same thing I did the prior 30 weeks. And so the first thing that you do as a ministry, you go, well, did I miss it? Did I, did I miss it? And there's been times I went and asked the Lord before and he'll say, yes, you missed it. <laughs> Not maybe didn't what I preached, but in preparation or some things that I've done, you need to, you know, do this better or do that better. Um, other times I didn't get much of an answer. But then as the years went on, I realized the, the service and how good it's going to be, it's not just completely under my control. It is also affected by how people come in. Amen. And so now you can't just not prepare and preach a bad message and blame the people. <laughs> so I'm not looking to blame anybody, but, but you have to teach people how to, how do I come to church? That's how you come, like I just described it. You want to have good services around here? Come like that every Sunday. It'll be good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then, praise God, the good thing about it is some days, you know, maybe the Lord used me to pull you along. Sure. But then other days, yeah. maybe you're amen and will pull some stuff out of me. Sure. That's how it's supposed to work. Amen. Right? Can you say amen to this? Amen. Now, that was all just extra, but I felt like we needed to. I guess we needed it. That's what we said. <laughs> Can't take it back now. Um, God is real. Say that to me. God is real. And the other thing is, his power is real. I mean, you, got, you remember when they parted the Red Sea? When the Lord parted the Red Sea? Something did that. Right? <laughs> that wasn't nothing. And in Exodus 15, the, um, I believe Moses actually said that to the Lord, something about how um, your right hand is glorious in power, you've, you've defeated all of our enemies. Well, see, something put the water up on its side. In Acts chapter 3, when that man was laying lame at the gate, called beautiful, and uh, Paul said, silver and gold, I don't have any, but in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. It said he received strength in his ankle and his feet, and he leaped and danced and ran. Something did that. Yes. The woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment. 
couldn't get healed for 12 years, and immediately she was made all, something did that. And so God's power is real. And I like this verse in um, uh, Psalm 147, 5. It says, great is our Lord and of great power. Nahum says, and Nahum 1, 3 says, he, the Lord is slow to anger and the Lord is great in power. Say that with me. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. Is his power great or is his power great? Jeremiah talked about how you created the heavens and the earth with your great power and with your outstretched arm and nothing's too hard for you. God's power is great. Can you say amen to this? Uh, put Luke 5, 17 on the screen. Let's look at that one. You don't have to flip there. Luke 5, 17 says, It came to pass on a certain day as Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And look at this, the power of the Lord. The power of who? So great power. Great power. Uh, creating universe type of power. Was what? Was present to heal them. What's that mean? It was in the room where they were. The power of God was there present to heal them. Praise God. Can the power of God show up in, in a room, in a service? And it's not just like a little power. It's great power. Great is the Lord and of great power. Slow to anger and great of power. Can you say amen to this? He is real. His power is real. His presence is real. Not pretend. You know, we don't just come in here and pretend like God's real. No, he's real. One day you're going to see him face to face. Right? He told him in Exodus 33 about his presence. He told Moses, my presence will go with you. Did you hear that? My presence will go with you. Say this with me. His power is real. He is, he is real. His presence is real. And him manifesting himself to us, that is real also. He can show up in your room. I was studying a while back, months ago. And all of a sudden, I mean, I, I pray every time before I study. I know that God is there and always. I mean, if he wasn't there, this wouldn't be any good. <laughs> But all of a sudden, it was just like he turned it up. And just right in the middle of my study, I'm like, I could just sense. It wasn't goosebumps. I might have got some, but that's not what I'm talking about. I just sensed God is in the room. And I just stopped. Whew. I just want to thank you, Lord. And then he said this to me. <laughs> he said, the one that hung the planets in the sky visits you in your office. One-on-one -on -one meetings. Mm. We can get some stuff done. <laughs> and uh, he'll do that the same for you or me or anybody else that wants him to. But you know why he could do that? Because he's real. And him manifesting himself to us is real. And it's something he still does today. He still does it today. And so what happens is many people mentally ascend to the reality of these things. They'll nod there and go, yeah, God's real. Yeah, his power is real. Yeah, his presence is real. Yeah, and his power is great. They, yeah, yeah, it is. They, they agree mentally. But that same group of people deny that we can experience the reality of these things in our lives. Did you hear that statement? Many people mentally ascend. God's real. I mean, there's not a Christian alive that would tell you God's not real, his power's not real, his presence isn't real. They would all say it's real. But then there's a whole bunch of the church that if you said, man, God showed up at our church service and his presence is so strong, the joy came, we were running and shouting, people were getting hands laid on them and falling down, they'd go, oh, no, that ain't God. God don't do that. Right? I mean, well, does he still visit people? And when we find out last week, one thing that happens when he visits people, joy shows up. I'm talking about some excessive, 
laughing and shouting and running and dancing joy. And that's what people tell you, he's real, but you'll ne you never experience him like that. He don't do that anymore. Or he, he, he doesn't ever do that or whatever they say. And so they'll acknowledge that it's real, you know. Uh, people from more traditionalized backgrounds can fall into that. Is God real? Yes. Is his power real? Is it great? Yes. Is his presence real? Great. Well, what about it? Have you ever experienced it in your life? Never seen it in my life before. He doesn't do that anymore. I saw a video a while back. There was a lady that had been uh, delivered from a um, uh, uh, lesbian lifestyle, but she was a, pre she was a, a minister in a, in a denomination. And uh, she said what happened to her is she went to her a theological seminary. She studied all her books. She got good grades, and then she was placed to lead a church. But then somebody from a charismatic background, uh, it was a teen meeting, invited her to join them for this teen meeting one night, and she went. And she went into the meeting, and she said, for the first time in my, this is somebody that has been in th seminary and leading a church, she said, for the first time in my life, I had a real experience with God. Never had one before. Why? Because most seminary schools, you don't have experiences with God. You got books you're reading that were written actually by other men about what they think God said about this stuff. Had no encounter with God. But the Holy Ghost showed up in the meeting. And she said what happened is a, teen, a 19, 18, 19-year-old kid came over to her and had a word of knowledge for her, that she, could, he, she didn't know him, he didn't know her, and she knew the only way he knows that is because God said that to him. And uh, I'm happy to report that she was supernaturally delivered out of that lifestyle, and praise God. But can you be saved and not have any encounters with God? You can be saved and not even think it happens anymore. I like this verse in Matthew 22, 29. It's not directly in context, but it'll, it'll get the point across. <laughs> Jesus said this. He said, you do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. You make mistakes because you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. Man, I feel like that goes for a lot of the body of Christ today. You're making mistakes about the moving of the Holy Spirit because you don't know the scriptures and you don't know God's power. Because he's real, and his power is real, and it's great, and he still shows up in rooms, in services, in people's lives, and puts himself on display. Still does it. Can you say amen to this? Praise God. And one thing that, have you found Ezekiel 38? I told you to go to it 17 minutes ago. Uh, Ezekiel 38, 20, listen to this. One thing you see about God's presence, when it comes into the room, it has effect on physical things. Yes. Physical things like your body. Your body's physical, right? Yes. It's actually made of dirt. Your body's made out of the same thing a mountain's made out of. And his presence will affect these physical things. Listen to this in Ezekiel 30, 20. It says, the fishes of the sea the fowls of the heaven, the beast of the field, all things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Kind of sounds when God shows up, he starts affecting phys physical things, start responding. Your, your physical structure will respond when God shows up in the room strong enough, right? Um, and did you notice, I'm, I'm going, I'm, somebody said, what's the second one? I'm, I'm getting to it. <laughs> did you notice how it said that um, all men will shake at my presence? And then watch this, it said, the mountains shall be thrown down. The steep places, what are they gonna do? They're gonna, they're gonna fall. And every wall, what is it gonna do? It's also gonna fall. It's gonna fall. Why? Because of the presence. Some of you know where I'm going. Psalm 68, 8 says this, the earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God. Moved a mountain? God's presence? Well, there's another verse in Psalm 97, 5 that says, hills melt like wax at your presence. He just shows up. Physical things start going, oh, <laughs> 
And if you don't know any better, you're scared. But if you know better, you're like, yay. <laughs> God is here. Praise God. <laughs> now, that was my introduction. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 5, and I'll show you point two. Why, why would we read all that? Why would we talk about all that? Because you need to know, number one, uh, God's spirit, God's power, God's presence, all intertwined. So if you're praying for manifestations of the Holy Spirit, you're also asking for his presence and his power to show up, right? And you need to understand that it can show up in different degrees. It can show up stronger at times, less at times. Um, this is how it works. And it needs to be, you need to be aware and, and renew your mind even more than, you know, you think you do, that God is real, his power is real, his presence is real, and he still shows up in people's Houses, lives, still does that, shows up in the earth. He does. And when he does, physical things start to respond when he shows up. Physical things. Now, in 2 Chronicles 5, 13, uh, it says there that it came, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. That, that's, a, that's a message in itself. But there's unity here. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. Th this goes back to in a praise and worship setting. There needs to be one sound being made. Yes. And if you are sitting out here, you're not the leader of that sound. That is not how God ordained it. We are following the people he's ordained to be up here. They're leading us. And so, and we don't have this, I'm not thinking about anybody right now. I'm just telling you this. You want to be mindful about veering away from what they're doing. Sure. If they're leading us and it's coming down to a, a transition or a low place, that's where you need to go. Because we need to, if we want God to show up, we have to stay one. And so if they're slowing it down and, 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 you know, getting ready to admonish or whatever it is, and you scream and start running and hollering and running around the room, we're no longer making one sound. You're making a sound, and they're making a sound. And Psalm talked about how God dwells in unity. So I think it's Psalm 33. He puts his blessing where there's unity. In. You can go find it. <laughs> I don't do that too often to you, but I just did. <laughs> but... Um, it's, it's important we stay in unity. And it's also important if a lot of people are clapping and, and moving and doing this, that you're not here going like this. Because we need to make a sound together. And so now you might not be as expressive right now as some, but you can go like this. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, that's something. Just move with us. Just move as best you can in the same way they're leading. Fast song. If you can clap on beat, go ahead and clap. If you can't, just clap quiet so we don't hear you all beat. <laughs> but just, you know, you could, we all want to move that direction together. I, I digress. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Amen. <laughs> um, but uh, they lifted up their voice with the trumpets. I'm sorry, they, the one sound to be heard, verse 13, in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice and the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord God, saying, what are they saying? God, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. They're not singing about their problems. They're not singing about how hard it is. They're singing about how good their God is. <laughs> I'm giving, giving some worship people some very good instructions right now. Online, our guys do good, but people online might need some help. <laughs> uh, that then what happened? That then the house was filled with a cloud. Uh-oh. Somebody came into the room. <laughs> Even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister. So God came in the room, and what happened is they all fell down. Now, it didn't say, it said they could not stand. That means they weren't able to. That means this wasn't a, a conscious prostrating themselves to worship. No. Do you see the difference? 
That, that's, that's one way you can fall. You can fall forward to worship God. Praise God for that. That's not what happened here. God showed up and they couldn't stand up if they wanted to. Do you see this? Yes. Not able. And how come they couldn't stand to minister? By reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. I don't have time to look at all this, but 1 Samuel 4.22 reveals to us that his presence is his glory. And his glory is his presence. When they lost the Ark of the Covenant, one thing that was said in 1 Samuel 4.22 is that the glory is departed from Israel. When they said the glory is departed from Israel, they were talking about the presence. Because the, I think the Philistines came and took the Ark of the Covenant. So they didn't call it the presence, they called it the glory because the glory is the presence. The presence is the glory. And these guys were worshiping and the glory showed up and the presence showed up and what happened to them? Boom, down they went. Now, if God's presence can move Sinai, it shouldn't be shocking that he could move you. <laughs> right? It didn't say all men are gonna shake and mountains are gonna shake, and the fish are gonna shake, and everything's gonna shake, and they said walls are gonna fall, mountains are gonna fall, and you know who else is gonna fall? You gonna fall. Amen. <laughs> huh? And here's the second thing of the Spirit, 45 minutes in. <laughs> One thing that can happen when the Holy Ghost shows up, and it can happen like that, where he just comes into the room and people just fall, it also happens frequently when people get hands laid on them. People will start falling down. Now, I'm not talking about a, a faith fall where you're aware I'm falling back. I, I don't have much to say about that. I don't think you should ever fake anything. Don't ever fake. But I'm talking about that you, I've had this happen where the, somebody will lay hands on you and something knocks you over. And not somebody's push. There's, there's something real. You feel it. <laughs> Boom, and down you go. And that shouldn't be shocking. Because God's presence has this effect. The Apostle Paul in uh, Acts chapter, praise God, Acts chapter 26, 13, just look at it on the screen with us. He said, I saw in the way, this is, he was telling his story when he was on the road to Damascus. That's happened way earlier, but he's telling the story. And he said, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me, and when we were all fallen to the earth. Do you see what he, he's saying? God showed up, down we went. <laughs> His presence came and knocked us over. Well, that shouldn't be shocking. His presence came to a hill and melted it. Now just stay with me, because there's a lot of good stuff here. And then in Revelation 1.17, uh, John wrote there, this is in the ISV. He said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. Well, that's how, when, whenever the power of God hits you, that's how you fall. You fall like somebody that's been, you know, I'm, this is, yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say, thank you. Uh, shot, like it's, it's not like I'm, it wasn't like I'm falling forward to worship or I'm falling consciously. Falling like a dead person means involuntary, unconsciously, you go down. Can you say amen to this? Amen. And then in Matthew 28, when the uh, guards came to Jesus' tomb, and you remember when that angel was there? It said the angel looked as bright as lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards shook from fear and fell down as though they were dead. Kind of looks to me like the presence of God shows up and it can get so strong that it starts knocking people down. They came to get Jesus, <laughs> Judas did. Judas, you gotta read it in John 18, we won't go there. But Judas uh, and the, the religious leaders of the day that wanted to crucify Jesus, they came to get Jesus. And I think the scripture says in John 18, three, they had swords and, put that up there. Well, let's see what they had in their hand, John 18, three. I, I saw like a group of people that had pitchforks. <laughs> you know, like, we're coming to get Jesus. It says, having received a band of officers, chief priests and Pharisees, they came with lanterns, torches and weapons. We came to get him. We came to get him. And verse four said they came to get him. Jesus knew what was gonna happen. He said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And when he said it, in verse, verse six, they all went down. I guess their swords didn't help them. 
All, what did he say? I am he. They all went backward. That's not fallen to worship. That's him going, I am he. I am. I am. I am. I am. Remember, most said, God, I, you tell him I am sent you. This is, this is talking about his presence. Presence showing, I am he. Boom, down they went. Does it happen that the presence of God could make you fall down? Yes. Now, I mean, you're nodding your head and agreeing, I just love it because it's better to have you like that. There's a large portion of the church that thinks anytime that happens, people are faking something. Yeah, you're right, well, what do we do with all these scriptures? And then, you know, you've got a whole bunch of, <laughs> bunch of people that'll say, oh, yeah, it did happen, but God doesn't do it anymore. Well, he did it to me in uh, 2005, 2004, excuse me. He did it to me again in 2014. He did it to me again in 2022. I guess he still does it. You're saying he doesn't, but, I, but I've experienced it. <laughs> it's like me swimming in a pool and you saying there's no water in the pool. I'm swimming in the pool. You can't convince me there's no water in the pool because I'm swimming in the water. And so people have all kinds of reasons of why God isn't the way he used to be. Even though he said, I'm the Lord and I don't change. <laughs> but this, this, the presence of God can have that effect. Where he shows up and, and great is his power. Great is his presence. And it just gets so strong you can't stand. Can you say amen to this? Um, Acts 5. How much time... Do I have left? Not much. <laughs> Let me show you this. Acts 5. Now, this, the spirit, the power, the presence can come on a man or woman. Understand, when I say man, I'm just talking about mankind. The spirit, the presence, the power can come on a person. And then it can be transferred from that person to another. In Acts 5, it talked about how they were bringing sick people, this is verse 15, into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. And they did it that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And then verse 16 says, they all were healed, every one. Now, do you see what's going on here? The Spirit of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the presence of God was so strong on Peter that they found out if we just get people in shadow distance of him, whatever's on him comes on them and they get healed. Is this fairy tale or is this real? real. And so you can see it's, it's obviously not on them right now. It's on Peter. But if they got in close proximity to Peter, it got on them. You know why it can do that? Because the power of God's real. It's real. And praise God. Uh, so the spirit, the power, the presence can come on one man and then be ministered to others through that person. When I was uh, years ago, back in 2014, I don't think we have time for the video today. I might. We'll just have to see. Uh, Cue that one up of uh, Brother uh, Jerry praying, laying hands on me. But I was in a minister's conference, and when I was like this, this was the front, so I'd have been facing this way. And then Brother Jerry was over here, and I was, I was towards the end. I think it was more in the middle. And uh, I went up. The pastor told me to go up and get hands laid on me. Um, he invited me up, so I said, sure thing, <laughs> I'm going. Now, when I went up, I'm not thinking about falling down or anything. Not, that's not crossed my mind at all. Brother Jerry's way over here. And as he started to get closer to me, the best way I can describe it, I, I felt like the room, in the room, I felt like a heaviness. It was like something, I was in the room, but then something in the room was squeezing me, like this, boom. It's doing this. Almost like it was pulsating, but it was all around me. And as he got closer, like it got stronger. And then uh, he laid his hands on me. I tell you what, let's just play that video. Now, if you don't like stuff like this, just hang around. Uh, we need some sound here. Yeah, there. That's good. Amen. 
That, that's me. I had hair. Somebody go, where are you in that video? That was me. <laughs> that, was, that was me. But that was not, I didn't do that voluntary. I felt like a dead person. That's how I felt. But I could, what I was telling you is, it was on him. That, now, it doesn't have to be on one person. You don't need to make much of a man. Make much of the gift and the office. I honor Brother Jerry. I love him. He changed my life. But it was on him and as he got closer, I could feel it like boom, 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 boom. It's getting bigger, like stronger. I could feel it. I'm not, not making it up. I could feel it. Well, that shouldn't be a shock to you. That's what's going on in Acts chapter 5. They're like, let's just get him in shadow distance with Peter, and they'll get healed. And it was so strong on him, it's coming out of him and healing people. So the spirit, the presence, the power can, can manifest on and in a person and then be transferred to other people through that person. Are you all with this? Yeah. And so um, then the spirit, the power, the presence, the anointing can be transferred through touch as well. Um, Acts 19, 11 says, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. What does that mean? When Paul would lay hands on him, miracles would happen. Why? Because the presence, the power, the gifting, the anointing was so strong on Paul he would touch people, and then whatever was on him would touch them through the laying on of hands. And then this is really interesting. The next verse says that, uh, so that it was so powerful that so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases from them and the evil spirits went out of them. And so the power of God actually went into what he was wearing. And then they would touch the sick person with it, and they would get healed. Woo-wee. Now, this doesn't mean you need to get handkerchiefs, call them anointed, and sell them for $19.99 to people. The anointing's not for sale. But that, let me be nice. People that do stuff like that don't change the reality of this. This is real. And do you know, spiritual things, dear Lord, uh, natural things, spiritual things and natural things, they... The natural comes from the spiritual. And so in the natural, we have, we have power like electricity, right? Electricity. And electricity can be in one thing over here, and then as long as it can touch this thing over here, whatever's in this can travel through this and touch that. That is exactly how the anointing works. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? It said she touched the hem of his garment. Well, what was in his garment? Same thing that was in these garments Paul was wearing. Power presence, anointing. And it was not just the physical touch, it was the faith touch. I'm touching, believing that when I do. That's what makes it work. And then the power and the presence and the spirit that was on Jesus went through her faith, through that touch, got on her and healed her. And so it shouldn't be shocking that spiritual things can be transferred through touch. I mean, you ever done this with no shoes on? And go shock somebody? <laughs> you ever done that? Yeah. Well, what's happening? You're doing this and getting some charge in you. And then you can go touch somebody and that's power in you. It's, it's, it's flowing through. It's a, it's a very low form of electricity. And it goes through you and touches them. Now, let me ask you this. If I had enough electricity going somewhere and I touched you with it, you think you might fall down? Yeah. Well, I got something way more powerful than electricity. Yeah. We act like these things are so foreign, it's right in front of you. You just pay attention. Can you say amen to this? Amen. And so that's why oftentimes you'll see people who get hands laid on them, they'll fall down because whatever's working on the person up there comes out of them. And when the touch happens, that power, that presence, that spirit that made it so the priest couldn't stand up hits those people, they go down. Can you say amen to this? Now, you can act like all this isn't real if you want, and if you don't want to act like that, you don't have to ever have to worry about experiencing it because God won't bother you with it. He'll just leave you alone. I don't recommend it, but you don't have to talk bad about everybody that believes it. Hmm? Or call them heretics. Or say they have a devil. 
Just let people be. <laughs> I'm going to let you be stupid when you say no. To, oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to say it. I'm going to let you be. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I'm going to let you be. You know, you don't want to be bothered with it. We won't bother you with it. We got some people around here that are hungry for some of this stuff. And so praise God. Um, now, I'll close with this. Right here, good, perfect place to stop. It worked out good. The Lord knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm not surprised. We, uh, we don't need to put too much emphasis on falling down in the spirit. Sure. Did you hear that statement? We don't need to put too much emphasis on this. Focus on it too much. When you come up, get it out of your head. Don't, don't think, am I going to fall down or not? You're, you're, not even, you're not even thinking about the right thing. Right. We don't need to make too much of this. Um, nor should we deny its reality. So I want to say it together. We don't need to make too much of falling down. God can minister to people without them falling down. People can be ministered very strongly and stand up the whole time. So we don't, we don't need to make too much of this. Make a doctrine out of it and, you know, push people over and get silly. You know what I mean? People can get silly. But we don't need to deny the reality that this can happen when the presence of God gets strong. We should know that it can happen in God's presence. And we are hungry for manifestations of the Spirit, not hungry to fall down. You can fall down without the Spirit. I can push you over, well, maybe, I don't know what it is, but I could probably push you over without the Spirit's help. Sure. So you don't, we don't, people get too focused on like falling down, falling out. We had a powerful service because 20 people fell down. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's probably not the best way to judge it. You know, I mean, if you're aware of spiritual things, you can sense when the Spirit of God's moving or not, but just because people are getting touched and falling down, I, I don't know if it was just them and you getting excited. You, I don't know. If it's not my service, I'm not even the judge of it. You know, but, so, but that's, not, that's not the marker of whether or not something happened. Um, and so we're hungry for manifestations of the Spirit, not to fall down. That's not what we're hungry for. But sometimes when the Spirit shows up, people fall down. <laughs> I'm not focused on it, not thinking about it. If I lay hands on people and people don't fall down, I don't care. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. And I'm certainly not going to try to help them fall down. <laughs> no. And if people do good, a lot of times, if it's genuine, it'll really minister to you and help you and bless you. But we don't need to make too much of it, nor do we need to deny its reality. And a lot of people are either on one side or the other. Make too much of it or deny it ever even happens for real. And so uh, one more, I'm not going to read you this verse. We're just going to put it on the screen. I'll pick it up here next time. The purpose of his God's presence showing up is not falling down. God doesn't just show up to knock people down. <laughs> That's just an effect that his presence can have. He's not showing up just to go boom and knock you over. Boom, knock you over. Anytime God shows up, it's for a purpose. And he said this to the Apostle Paul right after he knocked him off of his horse. Well, he wasn't. I found that out <laughs> this past week, too. There's no scriptures that say he was riding a horse. So stop saying he was riding a horse unless you find a verse. I did not find one. But he was on the way to Damascus. It seems like it'd be funnier if he was on the horse, but we can't just put that in there. So he was just walking. And he, he knocked him down. And in Acts 26, 16, Paul said, this is what the Lord said to him. After he knocked him down, Rise and stand upon your feet. I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you've seen and those things which will I will appear unto you. Did you hear what he said? I, I showed up for a purpose. And the purpose, what, he didn't say I showed up for the purpose and the purpose was to make you fall down. No, he said I showed up for a purpose. And here's the purpose, to make you something you weren't before I got here. Now, my presence might have knocked you over because I have that effect on people, <laughs> but that's not why I showed up. All kinds of things happen in God's presence. And we'll talk about it probably next time. Refreshing and healing and miracles and victory. The psalmist said, my enemies are just perish at your presence. 
And so we'll pick it up there next time. His presence shows up. A lot of different things start happening. But he has a purpose for showing up, and it's not just the falling down. That's not, that's not, he didn't just knock Paul down and say, I knocked you down, see you later. He's doing something. So a lot of times when people are falling down, in the middle of a falling down, God's doing a bunch of different things. Because he showed up for a purpose. Go ahead and stand up with me. Thank you for giving me those extra five minutes. <laughs> Praise God. I appreciate it. Did the Lord help you today? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you get hands laid on you. Might you fall down? You might. Presence of God shows up strong. Could we all go down at once? <laughs> huh? Could we all be in here one day and just not even be able to stand? And if that happens, great. If that never happens, fine. We just want God. Amen. Whatever that means, that's what we want. And so if it is like that, good. If it's not like that, fine. Not making too much of it, but we're just aware that our Father... The, the Lord who is great in power, who is mighty in glory. Sometimes he shows up and people start falling over. <laughs> he just is that way. His presence is just that strong. And that doesn't need to scare you. It doesn't need to frighten you. And if it happens to you, just like Pastor Ron used to say about adversity, you know, just enjoy the ride. <laughs> you know, if you fall down, just, man, enjoy yourself. And let the Lord minister to you. And because uh, so many times he's doing things on the inside of you, while you're getting ministry, things on the outside, refreshing comes, miracles can come. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead and close your eyes. Father, we thank you for the power of your presence manifesting strong in our lives, in our personal lives, in our homes, on our jobs. Praise God. And we thank you for the power of your presence manifesting in our services here at North Smoke. We do thank you for it. Lord, we're hungry for your presence, hungry for your spirit, hungry for your glory. And we want you to manifest in any way that you see fit. And anything that comes as a result of you showing up, we say yes and amen, Lord. We receive it and we thank you for it. And help us, Lord. Help all of us in the room, anybody watching the line. Help us to not get into error, to not get into foolishness, to not get into fleshiness where we're just doing a bunch of stuff. We don't want us. We want you. We want your presence. And so we're, we believe and we trust that as we go in the coming days, personally and in our services, that you're going to lead us. You're going to guide us by your Spirit. And because you're going to help us and guide us, we say in faith, we will not get into error. We will not get into foolishness, phoniness, falseness, or fleshiness. We will experience the real move of your Spirit. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Praise God. I believe the Lord helped us today, don't you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.